Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Justin, editor of Rapzilla, and we are here for episode 20. We have Trisha Bell, we have Stephen the Levite, and we also have Jared Sanders. So let's go live. I see a lot of familiar faces in here. Hello. Hey. Nice, nice to see you up, up close, face Likewise. to face. Likewise. This is how we meet people these days <laughs> on Instagram Live. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, so, so very, very happy to have you on the show, Community During Chaos. Welcome to the show, and I guess tell, tell everyone a little bit about yourself first before we dive in. Sure. Um, I'm Trisha Bell, and I am a creative. Um, I own a business called Artso Indulge. It's a creative agency where we educate, um, develop, and highlight uh, Black and Brown creators and artists mm -hmm. who inspire and impact. Um, and yeah, I've, I've done a lot, <laughs> I've done a lot of different things. Um, but, um, I'm just happy to be in the space that I'm in right now where I can advocate and help, um, mm -hmm. creators in, in, in whatever capacity I can help. Um, I typically work with creatives in like branding and marketing. Um, we do project management as well. Um, and mm -hmm. those are those are the areas where we thrive in. And so I'm just excited to be able to to do that and help others um, where they need the help. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, obviously, we know that's super important, but we also know that ourselves as individuals have kind of had to stop and, and focus a bit on, on what we're doing because we're all in uncharted territory. So in this uncharted territory of 2020, how have you been able to navigate and survive and and just make it through to get to, which I can't believe to get to uh, almost the end of October. Yeah, um, it's been, <laughs> it's been <laughs> like a whirlwind, like up and down. Um, my husband, who's also an artist, um, you know, he's, he's the breadwinner. And so, you know, he's had, um, mm -hmm. he also works full time as well. So, you know, we have four children, you know what I mean? So it's been, you know, with homeschool and just work and, you know, um, being laid off because of COVID, like, it's just been a lot. It's been a lot, to be honest. But at the same time, it's also been a blessing. Um, you know, we've, the Lord has provided in ways that I couldn't even, like, explain to you. Um, and so, you know, it's just, it's been, I'm grateful either way, but it's been like up and down, to be honest, up and down. Yeah, I feel that learning, learning how to navigate with your kids in the background as my son screams right outside my door. I don't know <laughs> if anyone can hear that. Um, there he is. Um, but yeah, so that's definitely the challenges and the difficulties of, of doing that. But, um, yeah. you know, at least you're home with your, you know, most people or people who are able to are home with their families and trying to figure things out together. Yeah. Which is always a, which is always a blessing. Um, sure. But it always seems like no matter how late I, I do these things anyway, still one of my kids is being noisy. Um, <laughs> All so, the minor up, so don't feel bad. Yeah, yeah he's having a meltdown. He only has meltdowns at 9 p.m. on Monday nights, seemingly. <laughs> so, of course, lucky for me. Right. Um, so my next my next question to you is, you know, have, have you been able to use your, your platform and, and kind of everything that you do to have these discussions and dialogues, whether it be online or, you know, actually going out into your community or working with the church? Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, we have, we just moved to Atlanta um, okay. last November. And so like, I felt like we were like just settling in and being mm -hmm. able to kind of like, you know, get into um, just our community setting and get more comfortable when the pandemic hit. Um, However, you know, we've made it a point to like try to connect with people and right. just kind of be, be, you know, present when people are in need of just being around other people, right? Because I think that the isolation piece, you know what I mean, is also kind of a, a, a thing, you know, people get depressed and, you know, they struggle and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wired as a, I'm a very like, I'm an outgoing person and I'm a people person. So I try to make myself available for just like getting with people, you know, even if it's like online, on Zoom, you know, or if we can, can do some quarantine get ups. Um, that's as far as, as it's gone. Um, 
just because of, you know, because of COVID, but um, I'm definitely trying to create conversations and trying to, um, you know, create spaces where, you know, we can like thrive and, and just, you know, get like the things that we need, um, even, even during this pandemic. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm doing a boot camp, uh, which I know you're we're probably going to bring up later, but, you know, that, that's something that I wanted to, to also kind of like, I'm like, all right, I know it's a pandemic, but let's like, you know, people still need to work. People still need encouragement. People still need right. support. Um, and so I wanted to kind of give that and give back, um, you know, in that way. Um, so I, that's, that's why, you know, I'm, I was pushing to have it, you know, sooner than later. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. And if anyone, if anyone has been watching every week, this is now the fifth straight week. If you're keeping tally where someone has recently moved, like during everything that's been going on, you were at least before it, um, right. the last right four before. weeks, people moving like during the pandemic or like just a week before it. And then like, Oh, let me get acclimated to my new town. And then it was right. like, boom. Right. Okay, cool. I'm inside for three months. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So I guess, I guess this is the moving season for everybody. But yeah. yeah, definitely, I could imagine trying to, especially as artists and creatives, like, yeah, we're going to hit this new city like Atlanta. It's live. We're going to do all this great stuff. And then it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're going to stay old. <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, definitely a challenge. And and you brought up the the XL boot camp. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that? And I saw all the guest speakers that you have and and everything that's going to be going on with that. And that just looks like um, like if if you're a, a woman and you're creative, you need to 100% be a part of that. Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, we started planning uh, this event in 2017. Um, okay. And it was around the CHH sexism uh, hashtag situation. Yep. Um, I had already been thinking about doing something for the women. Um, and then, you know, Catalina, who was also a good friend of mine, um, we like linked up and was like, yo, we got to do this. Mm -hmm. We got to do something. And so yeah. um, she kind of was like, like, yo, let's do it, you know. And so um, she empowered me and and actually pushed me um, to do it. And so so now, you know, we're we're doing it basically for women who are Christian specifically, um, who are creative and who, who kind of do music um who are in media and do visual arts and we wanted to just like encourage and support them and yeah. we want them to to feel like they have you know other women like pushing for them you know i i came up in the chh scene alone honestly and mm -hmm. you know as male dominated as this industry is it, it's hard to like thrive and feel like i'm doing something you know that's that's like worthy of doing if you're not really getting that support, um, especially from other women, right? Yeah. Um, and there was a few women who were already thriving, but mm -hmm. I wasn't getting that support. So I just, I, it felt really lonely for me. And I said that I would never, you know, I would never want to leave a woman out or, or never yeah. have a woman ask me if they, you know, can get mentored or have help. And then I just leave them out there. You know, I just, I really... I, that happened to me. <laughs> and so I vow that I yeah. would never like do that to others. And so this, this specific um, workshop slash conference, whatever you want to call it, I would call it a boot camp. Um, this is specifically to make women feel like, yo, we are here. We hear you. We see you, you know, we see you killing it. We see yeah. you, um, you know, striving and, and trying to thrive. And we want to create this, this opportunity and this space for you to get shine, for you to, to learn um, and to be educated from the best of the best. Like we got, we got belief, we got, um, we have Wande, we have AI, you know, we have uh, Butter P, we got Risha, like we got all these like dope women and men, right? Because I think we, I think it's important to have the men who are also killing it um, yeah. to kind of help bridge some gaps that are there. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's something that is missing, right? I don't, I don't, you know, you don't really see a lot of men uh, hyping the women up, you know, in CHH specifically and, you know, hip hop in general is just, mm -hmm. it's just weird. But um, I just wanted to be able to create that space specifically 
for women, not just in hip hop, but if you're, you know, you do, you blog or, you know, you're, um, I don't know, you're a photographer, you're a, a cinematographer, whatever you do mm-hmm. in the creative space, we want to provide a place for you to just learn and get the support and feel the love. Um, so that's why we created it. Yeah, and that's awesome. And I, and I feel really good, too, because a lot of the women that you have on your panel, I've also had on this show. Yeah, yeah. So, so I feel like validated. I was like, yes, I got the smart, the smart people <laughs> that do the panels. I got them on, on this show too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and even some of the even some of the guys I've had on this show too. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've noticed for myself, and maybe it's me being ignorant and not really knowing, mm-hmm. but I feel like there's not a lot of women like journalists or writers within our space specifically of CHH. Yeah. yeah. Um, that are that are like. I just want to tell stories, you know, I'm yeah. not trying to sing, I'm not trying to rap, you know, design or whatever, you know, I just want to sit there like me and just type all day and send yeah. out emails and get questions. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if I actually have a, a question about that, but yeah. do you have any thoughts on that? No, I'm, I'm with you. Um, I'm yeah. in agreement. I think we absolutely need more. I mean, I'm looking for more women mm-hmm. who are just like, just journalists, writers, um, because we, I have a website and I want to be able to like provide those stories as well. Yeah. Um, cause I can't do it all, you know? And I'm like, I, if I could find, you know, like a handful of women who can just, who just want to focus on that, you know, I think it would be really dope. And so I think you just even mentioning it just yeah. says like, yo, like let's, let's get some more women out here. Tamara, I will shout out Tamara from Art Soul. She does kill it. Thank you, London. Um, London definitely, um, she put that out there. Tamara is a beast. Um, she writes, uh, for her, uh, her website and like, she is one of the, probably one of the only like main ones that I know of. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's other ones out there. Oh yeah. Shanette, Shanette Reed. Yep. Shanette Reed is another one. We Um, we have, we have Maggie at Rabzilla, but you know, I feel like she, you know, she's stuck in the guys club. Like we have all these guys, right. but we have, we have, you know, one girl holding it down and she, she holds it down too, because she, she outrights, she could outright me on, on a good day. So, oh, that's so I'm, I'm like, so proud. I'm like, yes, hold it down, represent. <laughs> but I'm, I was like, I'm telling her, Maggie, do you know anybody else? Like, you know, that any other women that are interested in writing, even if they, you know, they're not journalists or so like, we can, you know, we could teach them, we can train right. them, we, we can, you know, turn them and mold them into something and then they can leave and go do something that. great. Yeah. Um, so she's like, I don't know anybody either. So I'm just, I'm trying, if, if you are a woman and you're watching this and you want to write or learn how to write or be in the space, DM me or DM Rapzilla. I will, I will equip you and then you can leave me and, and fly away and become something great. Uh, yes. If you don't want to, if you don't want to hang around, but I'm, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. <laughs> That's what's that. That's I'm dope. down. That's dope. Uh, so, oh, one of, one of the other things I wanted to ask you, and I feel like now it's like a reoccurring, a reoccurring theme in my life. Mm-hmm. So a couple of, a couple of weeks ago, while looking for uh, women writers, I, I tweeted out and I said, female writers. And mm. then Aaron Knight was like, you shouldn't say female, you should say women. Mm. And then it's almost every single day since that happened, yeah. I've seen women referred to as females but mostly by other women. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm really confused. <laughs> so I just wanted to ask, you know, you, since you're doing this whole thing with women and you said women all over, all over your advertising and your flyer, whatever, you didn't say female one time. So what is, what is kind of the the deal or the, you know, I guess the nuance behind female versus women? Yeah, I I think, So this is my personal stance. I'm not, I'm not sure where Aaron stands with it, but I know in the hip hop culture, right? Mm -hmm. Like female is kind of like, it's kind of derogatory kind of like, or it's just kind of like, yeah, somebody said referring to as an animal, like it's just, it's just objectifying a bit, you know, just in the way that, that men have used female, like come here, female, like, yo, I'm a whole woman. Like, calling Mm -hmm. a woman is just it's just a little it's just a different it's just a different like I don't know just a different feel and vibe when you call me a woman right um as opposed to just like female 
female, male, like, do y'all, y'all don't really like being referred to as male. Oh, look at that male over there, right? <laughs> like, we don't really like saying yeah. that. Um, and so saying female, just kind of like, ah, it's just not, I think based on like hip hop culture, like, I think it just comes off negative. So I always like to address women as women, you know, I don't call right. them chicks or um, maybe homegirl, homegirl, but like, usually it's like women, like, you know, I think it, I think it just says, it speaks to um, who we are in a way where it's just a little bit more powerful, you know, saying like, yo, this woman or these women instead of like females. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely wanted to have a discussion because, you know, I didn't know. And it wasn't anything like I was trying to be like, give me some female writers up in here. Of like, course, like of I wasn't, yeah, wasn't yeah, trying yeah. to do anything, you know, and I spoke to some people and they're like, oh, I don't see an actual women. Like, I, I don't see anything wrong with female. And then another half that I, spoke to and asked about it it was like yeah I, I get it like I don't like that either yeah so I guess like you said it depends on context it depends on the person yeah. yeah um but I guess moving forward you know keep that mental note yeah that yeah. I don't think I don't think anybody is ever offended or upset at being called a woman that's a woman you know right and exactly. if and if there is a group that is offended by something else then you probably shouldn't say that anyway yeah, yeah. next yeah. 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 And it, it was weird, though, because like I said, most of the people I saw using it were other women. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, is this a one person issue thing or is this an issue? I was like, and then after I saw all the stuff that you've been doing, I was like, OK, I'm asking Trisha. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, okay. she's going to be the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think it's like cultural. Like, you know, I think the younger generation, I don't think they mind it. You know, what I mean, I mm -hmm. think they they use it. Um, re pretty regularly, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, I'm, I'm in a different, yes, I'm a millennial, but I'm also 37. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm not calling, you no know, female I'm call or don't call me a female, call me a woman. And I think like yeah. London or, or Lex said, it's kind of a respect factor. You know, it's just kind of like, it just gives you, it just makes you feel more respectable and more, you know, I don't know. I can't explain it, but it's just, it's just better. <laughs> Drew Beck says, nah, my wife got me hip to that real quick. So hey. Drew must have got Drew must have got in trouble too. And he had <laughs> he had a talking to. Um it it is funny to hear, you know, everyone is always blaming everything on millennials. But like <laughs> we're millennials, like we have kids in, in houses and stuff now too. It's not our fault. Yeah. <laughs> blame, yeah. blame some other people. We're we're like middle-aged people now. Exactly. <laughs> millennials. Exactly. <laughs> That's so funny. It's wild, but okay. So my final, my final question for you is what, what are your hopes and dreams for the future and in, in moving forward through all of this? What would you like to see happening uh, in 2021? Mm. And I, I think I would just love to see um, more women, um, specifically black women um, continuing to rise up and being the best that they can be. Um, mm -hmm. And killing it financially as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've been seeing more black women like in their businesses, just like continuing to thrive during the yeah. pandemic. It's, it is like blowing my mind and it's, it's super encouraging as well, you know, as a mm -hmm. fellow black woman business owner to like, to see that and say, man, like I can be there as well, you know? And so I think for my dreams and, and for the future for 2021, I just want to see more of that um, and us being more confident, you know, in the things that we're doing and not allowing others, um, you know, others opinions to like keep us back or hold mm -hmm. us back. That's mm -hmm. something I struggle with is just, you know, feeling inadequate. And so I'm, I'm like, I'm growing in that. And so I want, I want to see other women growing in that as well. So awesome. yeah. Yep. All right. So real quick, uh, give some plugs. Where can everyone follow you? Where can people learn about your boot camp? Because they have, what, a couple of days left to sign up to yes. get in there? The boot camp is on Saturday, October 24th at 9 a.m. So please, please sign up, get your tickets. You can get a, a VIP ticket for 75, but you get an hour with one of the speakers. And these speakers are like, we're not talking about you know, some regular degular people. These are like people who are successful and killing it in their, in their respective, mm -hmm. um, in their respective like crafts and, and industry. So 
uh, yeah, you can follow me at, at Artso Indulge or T Bells. That's my personal page. Um, and you can go to artsoindulge.com and you can go there and click on XL Bootcamp to purchase a ticket. And um, yeah, we're giving away three tickets as well. So if you, you don't have the money, like we got you. Seriously, <laughs> like, come on. Um, yeah, so just hit us up. Dope. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Um, and it was good to finally get a face to face with you as well. And uh, I Likewise. hope this this boot camp goes amazing because it looks amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Justin. All right. Have a good night. You too. Take care. All right. Bye. Peace. Peace. All right. So that was Trisha Bell. Next up, is Stephen the Levite, who just dropped a project with the late. DJ Official. Uh, the project was completely produced by DJ Official, which is pretty amazing. Uh, hello. Hey. What's up, man? You did the little switch off? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? We got to put the kids to bed and all that. So That's good. All right, well, man, it's it's nice to meet you. I don't think I've ever spoken to you before. So this is this is cool. And uh, so I guess real real quick, as you're in here, let everyone know who you are, what you do, and then we'll, we'll jump into this. All right, well, I'm Stephen Levite. Um, I've been doing Christian hip hop since like 2001. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the, the gist. But I also do, um, also talk, we also kind of mentor married couples and talk mm -hmm. about sex and marriage and dating online and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and um, yeah, that's, that's about all of it. Trish is in here hyping you up big time. Of course. Yeah, she's uh she's my number one fan. Um yeah. So I had I had Butter P and Kanada in here too, married couple, of course. So it's uh, it's funny because they had to do the switch off too, and then they were in the chat hyping each other up. I'm like, yeah, these husbands and wives, they're they're really good. <laughs> uh, it's really team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Stephen, my, my question to you is the same as everyone. How have you been able to get through 2020 physically, mentally, spiritually? What have you done to navigate this craziness? Um, you know, so when I've been busy, you know what I'm saying? I've been working um, not necessarily as much on music as much as uh, like I lost weight this year. I was working outside all summer, working, uh, building decks and sheds and fences and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was helpful. Um, it was a good distraction from like all the madness, especially on the internet. Yeah. Um, but I had to kind of develop boundaries as far as like what kind of, uh, you know, what people I engage and what people I don't engage. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Just taking time and just not going on Facebook sometimes. Um, not feeling the need to like, respond to everybody who asks me you know what i'm saying um because it's just not healthy you know what i'm saying like it's not always a safe place um for certain kinds of conversation so um i kind of had to learn that um but outside of that just you know again just trying to stay busy like you know our our life was pretty crazy leading up to 2020 mm -hmm. so um so 2020 was just kind of like, oh, this too. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Another um, one. Like, I think, you know, I've the Lord's put us through enough in the last, you know, five or so years that 2020 was just another part of the exercise. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've trusted him through losing everything. We've trusted him through um, having to move a bunch of times. Um, so, you know, what's a, what's a pandemic, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, he's, he's handled us, he's taking care of us through everything else. So, yeah, um, you know, so it's just another, another, you know, add another five pounds on the, on the bar, on the bar, you know, so nothing, nothing too crazy. Yeah. I, I really feel what you were saying about Facebook for sure. Like I never suffered from any sort of anxiety or whatever, any time in my life. But every time I'm on Facebook, whether it's a family member, a close friend, just anybody, I'm like, oh, man, these, these are there are people who like think these things or or believe in these things that they're actually sharing and typing. And I'm yeah. like, yo, I got to get off. Like I deleted it on my phone. I got rid of my feed um, on the desktop. 
But it's like, as someone who's in media, and then you know, as an artist, like you need your social media to do stuff. So yeah. I'm like on the Rapzilla page, quick, I got to get off, got to get off, but I'm closing the tab. Like, I can't see anything. I just got to make my post on the Rapzilla page and I got to get out of here. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just so my, my heart is just like, I, I can't take it. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's the weird catch 22, like trying to avoid social media, but also trying to like promote an album or. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever, like, it's like this weird tension of like, I need the internet, but I don't want to need the internet because I'm trying to avoid the internet. So, um, so yeah, it's hard to navigate, man. It's definitely a struggle. Yeah. And it's like, I'm posting things. Hey, people read this, but I'm not trying to read anything that they're saying. So we're, we ain't going to read what you're saying if you won't even talk to us. But yeah, it's just, it's this crazy dynamic all the time. Um, mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask you with everything that's going on, whether it's the, the civil unrest or even COVID, just uncertainty that's going on. You said you have two older kids, nine and 10. So what are those conversations like with your children? And how have you been able to kind of steer them through this with you guys? So they're, they're pretty. So my, my son is like, he's more the anxious type. He gets shut and um, he gets real extra cautious. So. He just wants to stay at home all the time. <laughs> yeah. He kind of gets, he understands what, what the, what the pandemic is. Um, sometimes he overestimates what it is. Like, you know, he'll think that like, you know, like COVID comes from not washing your hands instead of you can catch COVID if you're not washing your hands. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like and a little complex. Yeah. He doesn't understand like the details sometimes, but he's extra careful. So I don't really worry about him. Um, my daughter, she's, she's not as, you know, she's, she's a little bit younger, but she kind of grasps things as well. Um, and, um, you know, so they're, they kind of get it. They're just like, look, we got to stay home and, you know, do school online. And that's, that's what it is. Um, you know, they kind of get bored. Um, over the summer, I was able to take them to work with me sometimes. Um, things like that, just to help them, you know, kind of adjust the scenery mm-hmm. But they do get bored. They want to get out of the house. Uh, we've been trying to do like daddy daughter days and yeah, father and Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Like just like the two of us do something and stuff like that, um, just to kind of help them like you know adjust and get used to it. Our church, um, our church did a parking lot pull up thing this weekend, so we were able to kind of actually like go and physically fellowship with um, some members from church this weekend. So. That was good. They got to run around and play with other kids and they had masks yeah. and everything. And, you know, so they really enjoyed it. But, um, you know, we're hoping to do more of that just so that they can kind of stay sane and um, remember what, you know, fellowship in person felt like. So, yeah, so they kind of they get it. Now, what what about some of like the civil stuff that's going on and the racial stuff that's going on? Are you making them privy to that or you're kind of like shielding them a little bit? Um, I'm trying to help them understand because I feel like for, for me, like, um, I had parents that were, that were cool enough to give me like, um, you know, I had a black history book when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, now of course it didn't get into all the details, but it gave me enough to kind of think differently and not expect everything to come from the textbooks in school. Um, but um so yeah so i try not to like keep them away from things um i try to talk through things with them certain things you know what i'm saying or you know i try to get like i'm not going to show them the george floyd video or anything right. like that but um but i try to let them know what's going on why people are protesting what they're upset about um the dude i forget his name but the guy who uh bought the tomato i forget his name um but he's got a couple videos on um, racism in America and stuff like that. So I showed those to the kids because um, they were pretty well detailed and laid out in like a pretty well formatted situation. Um, so I felt like they, you know, they kind of watched that and they kind of understood some things. And um, so I've been trying to like give them like bits and pieces and, um, you know, make sure that they understand what's going on. So. Um, at the same time, I have to like rein them in a little bit because, like, 
when my when my son found out that Donald Trump had COVID, he kind of got excited. And I was like, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> like, hold up. This, I understand, but like, no, we don't, we won't, we don't want bad for people. You know what I'm saying? But um, you know, we try to we try to rein them in. So they they get it, but you know, we gotta, you know, give them the grace and truth also. So Okay, yeah, I feel that. So now you you just dropped an album, Still Hungry. With DJ yeah. Official, yeah. Um, so one of the things that I saw on your Instagram, you posted about making adult music, and that the C in CHH doesn't stand for children. Yeah. So can you can you maybe open that up a little bit, and let's talk about that because I know a lot of people, especially in the space, even the adult ones, they're like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm uncomfortable, but it's like but this applies to you like you're not yeah. you're not the child like maybe yeah. okay maybe you don't want your kids listening to this but like this is this is applicable to you so can you talk about that yeah um so i feel like um kind of the big picture when you look at rock music blues jazz pretty much any other genre mm-hmm. nobody says you're too old to be doing it you know what i'm saying hip hop is one of the few genres where um, you know, once you hit a certain age, they're like, oh, should you be rapping anymore? Like, don't you think you should do something that's more appropriate for your age? It's like, but who put the age limit on hip hop? You know what I'm saying? Like, just because it started with young people and it kind of was uh, stereotyped as a fad, um, you know, it became kind of like, you know, kind of seen as this thing for young people, you know? Um but I'm like, hip hop is growing up and the people like the people who are killing it the most right now are like in their 40s. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In their 50s. You know what I'm saying? Jay-Z still rapping and he's still killing it. And, and like he hasn't slowed down a bit. And um his skills are not lacking. Um, but he's up there, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So um, so yeah, so I think we need to get used to the idea that hip hop isn't just a young people thing. On the contrary. What I've seen and experienced is, you know, when people find out, especially like older, um, especially older white people, um, older white Christians, like when they find out, oh, you rap. Oh, my kids would love your music. You know what I'm saying? The first thing they think is my kids. You know what I'm saying? It comes in my youth group with with your adult grown man raps. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, but I'm not that much younger than you, bro. Like. Like, you can buy my music. I, I write stuff for you. You know what I'm saying? I have yeah. kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, so again, I think um, people need to stop looking at hip hop as, oh, that's the, the young people music. And I also think um, that the content um, should reflect the the people that are actually rapping it. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I don't have young, <clears throat> young people struggle. You know what I'm saying? I can't identify with all that stuff I some of that stuff like I oh yeah I used to deal with that you know what I'm saying but yeah. right now I'm married I got five I got four kids like you know that's where I'm at in life and that's the kind of stuff I'm gonna rap about you know so um so you know I'll try to make sure that people like I'm trying to help people see hip-hop differently you know what I'm saying yeah. um <clears throat> so yeah I'm not you know again like I'm let the young people do young people music. You know what I'm saying? But don't, I have gray hair in my beard. Don't expect me <laughs> to, you know, be the, and again, like youth group, youth group concerts a lot of times, like I've been to youth group shows where the kids aren't really paying attention anyway. Like it's really just something to get them excited. They jump around, they're dancing to your music, but they're not listening. You know what I'm saying? So um, and with the kind of content that I put in my music, that's not really what I do it for. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and again, I, it's not that I am opposed to doing youth group show. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll come to do your youth group. You know what I'm saying? But just know what you're asking for. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'll use I'll use some different songs. I'm not gonna do all the marriage songs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, but I'm you know, but again, still, it's gonna be some heavy content. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so you know, at least make sure that they're listening and paying attention, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I think for the sake of, like, the discussion we're having, as far as rappers 
being old. Like people don't, like people can't wrap their heads around it. I think it's probably because um, this is the first generation of old, of older rappers that are still mm. relevant. Yeah. Because you had like your Run DMC, LL Cool J, you know, Big Daddy Kane, all those guys, but their music kind of faded out because hip hop evolved so much. But yeah. Jay Z and Nas and and Eminem and and Dre and like these guys have been around forever and they're still exactly the names they were, you know, twenty years ago. So mm-hmm. now it's like, hmm, Eminem's forty nine, Jay Z's like fifty two, or Nas is fifty or whatever. It's like, why are these guys still rapping? Uh, you know, Big Daddy Kane stopped rapping and actually he didn't. Like but these guys still drop albums, just nobody yeah. knows, but they still tour and whatever. So I yeah. think I think it's interesting that like we're just finally in an age where the older artists are actually still relevant. So nobody knows what to do because, because we're yeah. like, well, we've seen Rolling Stone perform for 60 years or, or Paul McCartney and they're like 80 years old. Uh, you know, like you said, like how come rock and blues and whatever, they kind of have this eternal life of playing music, but rappers like, oh, you're 38. Maybe you should stop now. Mm. Uh, it's because yeah. we're in uncharted territory, I guess. Yeah. We're still part, you know, Hip hop is still young. I mean, it's growing up, but it's still relatively young. And um, you know, cats, you know, like the people we've been talking about, Jay Z, Eminem, like they're still pioneering in a lot of ways. Yeah. Because, like, you know, four 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 was a new uncharted territory for Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna rap about finances and give people game about buying property and art and stuff like that. You know, so. Um, so yeah, so it's still it's still new territory for for our genre, you know. And you have to be innovating if you're still, you know, if you're up there in age and still just as relevant or even more so than the hottest rapper who's maybe 18 or 19 years old. Like you're yeah. obviously doing something right like, oh, you know, this guy should stop rapping. It's like, well, people still buying his records, people still streaming. Yeah. Um so still still doing something right. Yeah, Jared Jared said Ironically, a lot of the ones at the top of the genre are older, yet the genre won't let us age. It's so odd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just this weird, like, like you know, paradox. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. So that, that's hip hop, and now we're and now we're even talking about the the micro hip hop of CHH. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. yeah, and then that always gets interesting. So yeah. I wanted to ask you this in, in creating a project with, with someone who's passed away, like DJ yeah. official, you know, how do we kind of bring life and celebration and honor to someone like that without maybe being insensitive or like, Oh, you know, it's just kind of using DJ official's name or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's actually been like a wrestle for me personally, because <sighs> Cause yeah, like you know, again, I loved Fish. I loved his his family, um, and you know, it was it the dynamic changed. Cause you know, of course, I got the beats from him before he passed away, right? Um, and then like in the middle of me making the project, he passed, and it just changed everything. It was like, like you know, cause again, like you look through hip hop history, and like when people pass away. Like, you know, all of a sudden the next album is like a certified classic. You know what I'm saying? That posthumous release. You know what I'm saying? Um, And it changed the way I approached the album. All of a sudden it went from some quick thing that I was going to do seven tracks and then kind of move on to the next one to this thing that was going to take me four years because I was worried about how people were going to look at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so yeah, I've wrestled with that. Um, I think, I think the focus is like I just I just analyze everything I do. I you know I I worry about um making sure that the money is going in the right places. Um I worry about um making sure that people know like hey it's a collab album it was me and Fish. Um I try to you know like you know and it, and again I I have to and I have to question myself all the time like what are my intentions like am I Am I tagging him so that people, you know, like, how can I point to him and to his legacy and to what he did um, without it being selfish? Like, 
you know, yeah. when I made the playlist, that's all of the music that I made with them. Um, is it is it being selfish? Like, am I trying to attach myself to his legacy? Or is it really just getting people ready for the album? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to, I've, I've been wrestling with all that stuff the whole process. But I think, um, I think for anybody else, I think the goal is just to, you know, again, just enjoy his music, uh, remember his legacy, uh, give him his props, you know what I'm saying? And, and really, um, you know, take the opportunity to learn from the people who knew him um, and, and kind of celebrate, you know, what he did for the genre and, you know, in the kingdom and um, just how he elevated the art form. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he really, um, I always say he, he played a huge role in Christian hip hop being seen as, as the, the level of legitimacy that it has now, you know? So, you know, so I'm always just trying to, you know, um, just give him his props and, and point yeah. back to him, so. That's dope, man. And you mentioned a couple of times the word legacy. So for you, and I guess, I guess from, from the, from the artist side and maybe even as the believer side, like what type of legacy would you like to be remembered for or, or leave as far as the work that you've done here? Yeah, I like, <clears throat> um, you know, I want to, I want to go down as somebody who made classic music stuff that was timeless. Um, you know, I want people listening to my music decades after I'm gone. Um, and I, I want the the content to continue to kind of reveal itself to people. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I always want people to, you know, a year or two from now, people listening to the same, you know, my first album and still realize, oh, snap, that's what he meant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. Um, I like, I like, I like to create content that keeps giving, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and hopefully just, you know, the, 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 the theology and the doctrine and, you know, the practical, the ideas, um, that I put in the music, like people will still be kind of like benefiting from, you know what I'm saying? For years to come. So, yeah. Um, so hopefully that's, that's what most people get, but the people that know me, I hope that they take away that I actually was serious about living this stuff that I love my wife and I was really um, intentional about, you know, living what the Bible said and preaching it later, you know? Yeah. Dope. I, I like what you said too, about kind of rediscovering, Oh, like that's what he meant. I'm notoriously mm -hmm. bad at like getting songs. I, I listen to songs 500 times and 20 years later, I'm like, Oh, I get it now. And then it's like, when you do that, you want to go and tell everybody, did you know that this meant, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, we knew it. Like, where have you been? <laughs> so that, that happens to me all the time. And, but every time it happens to me, it's like, I'm hearing a, a, a new song for the first time again. So that's yeah. such like a, a refreshing thing when you can create art that has those different layers that get, that maybe it doesn't mean something in this season of your life, but later on in your life, like as a grown yeah. adult, you know, if, if I listen to your, your adult, your grown and adult Christian music when I was 18, I might not get it. But yeah. as a 32 year old, I will. Yeah, and that, yeah. that whole album and that music will be completely different uh, meaning for me. It'll be like a new project. So that's super dope. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So final thing is uh, drop some plugs. Where can we find you, follow you, listen to your music, plug away. Yeah, um, both on here and Twitter is the whistleblower, DA whistleblower. Um, and for everything else, you can just Google Stephen the Levite, Stephen with a PH. Um, and yeah, the album's out, cop that, stream it, run up the numbers. Um, we got merch, uh, hit up the link in my bio. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks for listening and hope you all enjoy the project. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. It was great meeting you. Appreciate you sharing everything that you did. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right, man. Peace. <laughs> oh, what's happening, man? What's happening? What up? Looking, uh, looking slim. Look at you. Yeah, yeah. 53 pounds, doggy. 53. You weigh less than me now. I saw that scale picture. I was like, damn. <laughs> damn. Nah, man. Just trying to put the work in, dog. That's it. Now you did. You're always working, man. How how are you? How you doing? Ah oh, man, I'm good, man. 
I'm uh, healthy. Like I, I joke about it all the time, man. Uh, I got uh, into the exercise thing because I messed around and uh, was tying my shoes the other day and my stomach was in the way. So, <laughs> you know, we, do, we do something about this right here. Um, yeah, the wife was dropping little subtle hints um, for a little while and I just wasn't trying to hear it. Now I look back at the old pictures. I'm like, why y'all lied to me this whole time? Um, so, so yeah, um, other than that, man, I feel healthy. I'm, uh, clear of mind a lot more now. Um, uh, definitely got involved, uh, more in kind of stewardship, uh, mm -hmm. with the, definitely stewardshipping, uh, over the family, man, because, um, you know, God gave me an interesting, uh, two words, uh, ending last year, going into this year, he said, steward well. Um, and I really didn't understand it. You know, I was like, okay, yeah, cool. Finances, you know what I'm saying? Get your chicken mm -hmm. right. And, um, you know, uh, COVID hit, you know, after after Hope is Dope happened, we was like thinking about tour yeah. and, you know, everything. And then, uh, you know, things shifted. So it was like, man, uh, so Stuart means like my kids are home now. So I got to deal with them. <laughs> like, I can't drop them <laughs> Deal, anymore. deal with them. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, because... Cause they both um my daughter was uh going to initially when i went full time i brought my son home uh to to kick it with me and my daughter went to school and then COVID hit and then um when i from what i was hearing at the early onset of COVID, i was like oh like let's just take her out of school you know so i had to bring her and her you know five-year-old rambunctiousness into the equation with a two-year-old son who basically gets overly excited to like jump off of really high objects and, and put it yeah. in danger all the time. So yeah, um, you got that, you got the educational thing, trying to teach a five-year-old while a two-year-old is present and you got to give him like a mini version of what she has so that he doesn't feel left out. And um, meanwhile, my wife works from home. You know what I'm saying? So um, she's got, two kids dum, 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 running upstairs she's got me like stop it go sit out like that's like, me all day too same same situation yeah so like all of that is happening at the same time and you know i realized man i'm not stewarding this well you know what i'm saying like i had to learn mm -hmm. how to really adjust um to you know everything being in front of you it's, it, we we don't realize how quickly we're willing to discard like the important things to and push them to the side because it's like oh well i'm not good at multitasking hey school take this kid hey school you know hey daycare take this um hey wife let's just assume that everything is great you know what i'm saying like <laughs> when you actually have to you know put everything in front of you and really assess it up close you learn a lot of things man and um I realized that as far as stewardship at the home, I was, there was a lot of opportunities for growth, right? I'll say that there was a lot of opportunities for growth. Um, and so it's been, it's been dope. Um, I, I can't complain now. Now I fully have a better scope of what steward well means, you know, uh, as opposed to when it started the year off. Yeah, man, I, I feel at hundred percent, my wife working from home now too. I have a one-year-old and a three-and-a-half-year-old, so they wouldn't have been in school anyway, but I would have had more help from my parents or my mother-in-law who, like, you know, now weren't coming because everyone's trying to keep their distance. Yeah. So it's like, all right, Justin, how do you, you know, be a journalist and do interviews when you need quiet time? And uh, now you have to work till two in the morning so your wife can work during the day because the creative person is the flexible person, right? So you you get all the you get all the crap hours or, mm -hmm. or the scrap or the scrap hours actually basically basically what's the leftover yeah and then you have the like you said the the young kid who basically your main job as a dad is to prevent a child from killing themselves every single day every day every single every day. single day i i don't even have to to feed him change a diaper i just got to make sure he doesn't jump off my railing you know from the couch down the stairs um and we fit consistent because for whatever reason they find a way to put their lives at risk every single day but uh yeah i feel you yeah so i'm i'm with you right there you found the time to exercise that is the only thing that i haven't figured out yet because i'm absolutely exhausted all the time 
but uh, <laughs> more, more, more power to you. Um, so yeah. you, so you kind of answered my first question, and I didn't ask it. So I'll I'll add to everything that you were saying into that into that soupy mix of the the civil unrest and the social justice and all that that was happening. So how did that factor into your already chaotic 2020? Um, you know, I'm I'm pretty active in my local church, um, and I I would I would you know say that I have a pastor who is i would say actively engaged um uh politically has you know close uh relationships and rapport mm-hmm. with you know uh sheriff's departments and uh uh city politicians and stuff like that so i've kind of taken a liking to those things as well cool. um, you know town hall meetings uh prayer meetings um you know always trying to find ourselves uh, a physical presence um in the local community is something that you know, we've kind of been doing since um, before COVID and all of that, but but I think yeah. COVID um, accompanied by a lot of the racial tension um, in the country has really kind of fired us up to really get active. Um, and so uh, for, for me, it's been uh, carefully and delicately, because like I said, I'm, I'm full-time with the kids. So um, sometimes there's a delicate balance between um, having the conversation and or having the conversation about the current state of affairs in the country but also being able to communicate it in a way that a young child will process and understand absolutely Um, you know so so my daughter is 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 obviously a lot more adept she's like oh okay so so daddy why are people upset you know and then you gotta kind of break things down my son is just like uh cookie like so, you know, like you know, like so. There's there's the careful balance between that. Um, you know, when we go out to, we did a prayer walk. I think it was a couple of months ago, um, uh, where you know I wanted to to make sure that um, initially this was when we had a lot of things we didn't know about COVID, right? So so we, yeah. the, I told the kids to stay with the in laws, and me and the wife went down, um, but. Uh, it's been at home, it's allowed me to focus on um, really finding the the balance between um, transparency, honesty, mm-hmm. and uh, being able to also focus on the fact that like, yo, you got your kids at home. You know what I'm saying? Like you have your wife at home. What I don't want to do is bombard them and inundate them with a lot of the the trauma porn that we could possibly turn on on television. Yeah, you know, sometimes we could talk about, hey, let's talk about uh, the Prince of Egypt. You know, like now my kids are singing that all the time. Um, but making sure that I allow them to be children too. You know, um, yeah. And me and my wife end up having a lot of these discussions. Um, you know, where we're, you know, cause like I said, she works from home. So when they're down for a nap, that's normally like her and my time to kind of, you know, chit chat and talk a little bit. Um, so we've had quite a few, uh, exchanges, uh, when it comes okay. to uh, issues, finding out things like, what do we want to do and how do we do it? Man, you answered another question about the kids. So you're efficient in this season too. Um, <laughs> all right. So. You never, you're, you're never one to, to kind of mince words on social media. So right. how, how important do you think and how well do you think these conversations are going on these platforms with, with some of your peers in CHH? And, and do you think it's caused more division, um, especially with like fan bases, or do you think it's really helped things? Well, I think it depends. Um, I, I think that what we see a lot of times on social media is a very like sensationalist um a, a very sensationalist view and and a lot of times we look at things in snapshots um, mm-hmm. and passing clips as opposed to like going back and seeing everything from the source so when i see you know conversations about politics um specifically you know i get a chance to sit back and say oh okay let me go make this cereal for my kids though. Like there's a lot of it that's very much like, okay, people feel what they feel. I, you know, 
if I have a question, I ask a question. And then if I have something to say, I, I have something to say. Um, you say in general, you know, like, and I think that uh, as, I, as I talk to my wife about it, like sometimes there's like a lot of adult energy uh, that I bring to social media sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and what I mean by that isn't so much like conflict, but, but I'm a person that's like, yo, so what you mean by that? Like, you know, like, and a lot of people, you know, say things off the cuff and I'm like, so what you mean? You know and like, you retweet them and you retweet them. You yeah. always give the retweet, which is something I noticed recently. Like, I want them to know, like, I don't want you to get it confused. Like, I'm talking to you. You address me publicly. So I want to make sure that I address you publicly. And so now I'm going to let every, everybody know. Yeah, something I want everybody to know that I'm talking to you. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so for me, I, I guess I bring a level of um, energy that sometimes is uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable to people. But, like, I'm like, look, at the end of the day, while a lot of people are getting upset, you know, generally, I'm sitting up here like, OK, so uh, what is Stephen A. Smith talk about with Max Kellerman today? Like, I don't even think it that deep. But, you know, some people, they do. So, uh, <laughs> well, listen, it's good for people like me who just love to, to watch you do it. It's like, yeah, I know I'm on Jared's side. So I, I'll never I'm always posting, oh man, am I going to get that retweet from Jared? I was like, I know I'm never going to get that retweet from Jared on on, on some on a call out like this. It'll be like, yeah, Jared's a dope MC. Or I wrote this article about Jared. And I was like, I get the nice retweet from Jared. <laughs> right, right. And you know, like, and I think what it is, is I, I would like to think, I would like to think that I'm consistent. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would like to think that I'm consistent. So what you see is what you get. If you meet me in person, what you get is what you get, and, and yes. I was talking. To, uh, I was talking to the homegirl about this uh, today. Like, I guess there's a level of adult uh, energy where, if I see something online and I get a sense of what something is, I don't know. Maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it's the hood booger in me, but sometimes hood I, booger. I, I, yo yo, it's I be ready to pull up. Like I'm actually like, okay, I gotta see what that is. I gotta see what that energy is. Like to see if my assumption is correct. So, um, you know, when it comes to those things, in essence, I can get very perceivably candid with people and I'm comfortable in my square. So yeah. when I say thing, like if somebody challenges me on my perspective and I support that perspective, I'm like, so, so what you saying? Like, I, I'm not about to, I said what I meant. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> not moving off of this square. So it's it's kind of like, what do you want me to do? Um, and maybe that energy is uncomfortable for some people. Yeah, Drew Beck said you're the you're the retweet comment king. Yeah, man. You know he's I not just, wrong. I just, I just want to make sure that they know that I heard them, I understood them, and I was talking to them. That that's what that's we what like. we're like. Dang, Jared, he's just a kid. Let him go. <laughs> I think I remember I roasted I roasted somebody like that one time. They're like, "Yo, dang, he's 16." I was like, "Well, he's got to learn. He's got to grow up one day." <laughs> yeah, and it's like, yo, I didn't. I'm gonna be honest with you. When you look on Twitter, you don't really know how old people are. You know what I'm saying? Like they come at you with the dull energy, right? Sometimes they got that, and sometimes they type in all caps, and it's like, yo, that's foreign language to me. I'm thinking, like, look, bring your voice down. You know, I don't <laughs> like what right now like it's uh, so and listen i'm a i generally would like to believe i'm a non-confrontational person but i'm also not a person that is going to have you thinking that i don't think something about you uh yeah i'm, I'm not gonna leave you thinking i don't think i i'm not gonna leave you thinking i think something about you um and just have it sitting in the air though like i'm gonna say it like if yeah. I want to say you, I'm gonna say it, and it's not to 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 create tension, but it's to like yo, so that we don't have these awkward conversations when somebody walks into a room and you're like, what are you, like, what are you talking about? Like, is he is he gonna say something to me? No, I'm the guy that if I think that there's some static and I see you in a room, I'm gonna walk to you. I'm gonna be like, hey, what's going on, man? I I saw this. You know, what what was that about? Like, I just you know, because eventually the the back and forth on the internet thing 
Like I tell my homies, man, I came up before the internet. Like I don't even know, like <laughs> I don't even know what that presumed energy is. Yeah. Now I feel it, man. So along those same lines, let's talk about competition in CHH. It's such like a, a taboo thing. Every week, yeah. every week it seems like there's some great debate about Christians and should they compete? Um, should you even talk about your accomplishments? But then I'm like, yo, this is hip hop. Like right. th- there's that blurry line here. Like that's kind of hip hop. Like you got that, that energy, like you were talking about. So you have any thoughts on this? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Like I, I believe I, I actually take the sentiment that I understand that it's not supposed to be a competition. Right. I, and I honestly could see why somebody would say that competitive flair uh, or the, the competitive aspect of rap shouldn't be overtly present in the space but i'm like oh first of all it's it's hip-hop one of the tenets of hip-hop is rap yeah there was always a competitive aspect to to rap and that's not to say you know so that you humiliate the man next to you but it's to show like yo you belong in this space like and and there's a lot of people that would like to believe that in order to the the assertion of one's ability or the assertion of one's skills equates to that person desiring to be viewed as better than and and it's like but wait when we go out there on the basketball court and play pickup ball like when they're out here picking teams your goal is to be good enough to get picked on the team you know what I'm saying like you're not always and not pick to, last yeah it's like yo you're always you're not trying to go out there and dunk on everybody or embarrass yeah. everybody but a lot of people really should be especially in the christian space should be like, yo, like I belong here. Like there's a roster spot for me. And generally speaking, like if there is a competitive aspect, like it's like, yo, we're on this song together. I don't want you to body me though. Like I belong here. You know what I'm saying? Like I rap and, and, and like, I want everybody who's on this record with me to know like, yo, you're not about to like kill me on this record. Like in Jesus' name, right? Because because this this the thing. What I don't want to do, it, what I don't want to do, and what I don't like doing is like Jesus juking the conversation, right? And so so what happens is the Jesus juke. It's easy to do. You know, it, like it's very easy. It's like, oh man, yo, who's 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 the best rapper? And then you be like, wait, we're all one in Christ, though. And it's like, come on, dog. Like, Jesus wouldn't <laughs> Jesus wouldn't pick the best rapper. <laughs> it's like it's like don't Jesus juke me, cause like let's not do that like so so in essence what i found so interesting about this space because i came from secular rap right Right. so because i came from secular rap and i was recognized in secular rap as a dope rapper um when i came over to the christian space like they recognized me as a dope rapper like so so when that happened like i was like oh it's cool this ain't no different than the secular community and like you're not (laughs) looking across the hall like Yo, is that my brother? Am, am I supposed to body him on the record? You're not thinking that. You think it's a safe space. But at the same time, if you come out and you're really trying to make sure that you put your best foot forward in your work, people immediately assume like you're trying to prove you're the better one. And it's like, nah, I'm trying to be the best representation of myself. But don't play and act like I can't get busy with these words. So, so that's generally the position that I take. And, uh, you know, some people don't like that adult energy. We're going to get, we're going to stick with that. People don't like adult energy in that context. You know, it's funny. I love, I love the, uh, the triangle attack of you, Dayton and Selah or Dayton's always involved with something, um, some sort of controversy. And then you'll come in with that with that retweet comment and then Sayla kind of like sneaks in with like a wise word that he screenshots and then puts on his Instagram later. Word. And he just word. sort of very subtly sneaks in like, man, I didn't even know he was part of this conversation. Uh, yeah. But that that's your triangle. That's your yeah. triangle offense. Word. And then that next random person in the comments is like, but Jesus though, like the Jesus juke, like it, it happens all the time. And like, uh, and then Bizzle just drops like a laughing emoji. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, the <laughs> time like Bizzle will actually like hit me up privately and be like, "Come on, bro, 
Like, and I'm like, what, what I do? Like, like what, what did I do? And I guess like, I have to attribute that to um, his wisdom in the game and understanding like where, like many conversations and opinions can go. Um, and he doesn't want, and I think honestly, deep down the sentiment is, he doesn't want to have to hop off the porch because somebody popped fly and said something crazy to me or somebody on the label either. So it's like, yeah. hey, yo, like chill out a little bit. I get it. It's it's hilarious. It's I just love watching you guys just move on social media. And yeah. and you know, I talk to you, I talk to Dayton all the time. So it's just like yeah. it's always, especially with Dayton, I always hit him with like that little like, man. You seen this guy who commented about you and Dayton's like, what are you talking about? And then he goes in, what are you talking about, bro? And he like goes in there and he's like, oh, I saw that. And then it's it's always, it's hilarious. All right. We'll, we'll get off that adult energy. So COVID, COVID shut down, you know, much of the creative spaces as we know. So how have you kind of been able to adapt in that sense of, of making up for for what you lost, I guess, as far as shows. And were you were you able to like figure out things that you're more capable of from these circumstances? Um I think that I think what I did, and I, I definitely didn't think about it initially, but I started doing this anyway. In preparation, I don't even know if it was for COVID, but I think just going full time, like I just started looking at every bill that we had and being like, yo, how can we save money here? Like, mm -hmm. like looking at everything that we had, like, cause like I said, steward well to me, man, get your right. finance, right? So I'm going through everything with a fine tooth on, like, where are we investing? Like, are we putting money into things that aren't yielding any fruit? Like, where can we diversify? Like, what can we invest in? Like, what can we do that um, will allow us to sustain in the event that, you know, everything dries up and that was just yeah. me thinking of you know going full time uh what COVID did um honestly is it changed um the quick money right so like the quick money is you go on tour you you go for like eight weeks you know what I'm saying? you just like man, get a lot of money in a really short amount of time yeah um so what we had to do is, and what I specifically had to do was find a way to make that same money that I would make in eight weeks and spread it out over the rest of the year. Like I had to think like that. So um, for me, it caused me to have to be more efficient. And I was like, look, um, when you do step back out for shows, things might not ever be the same. So yeah. what you want to make sure of is that, you know, while you're inside the house, you're not just getting obese you know what i'm saying like so you gotta be just like, just make sure that part is good um but then also make sure that my marriage was good so that i could get the send off you know what i'm saying like the proper send off so it's like because because if you start telling if you know when you got tension in the household and you be like all right i'm going on tour i'll be gone for eight weeks it's like like it, it's it's a lot and so for me, I was like, nah, let's make sure we good here. Let's make sure the kids are good. Let's make sure our, our, uh, our dedication and commitment to, you know, our ministries and church is good. Um, and then when we get to the transition to go back to traveling and touring, everything is on the up and up. So, place, yeah. yeah. So that to me is, is what I was focused on this whole time. Um, so COVID affected things in that you can't, you know, get up and go. But then again, COVID also has shown us, especially for the innovative people, you can create scenarios that allow for the performance that you want to do to be executed and executed yeah. well, like, you know, lighting and staging and, and cameras and all of that. Yeah, I mean, we just saw KB do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like for what, three, day, three nights in a row, he did a whole concert set. You know, to Toby Nwig, we did a one night only. You know what I'm saying? So deep down, what it, what is shown up is how innovative you can be and how mm -hmm. antiquated a lot of the ways that we used to do things were. Um, so so yeah, I mean this this has shown me a lot. Yeah, you see and you see that the entrepreneurial spirit kind of come out too. Like 
sure. I'm not I'm not even saying this as a call out, but like everybody's got a clothing company now. You know, every everybody's got some sort of shirt, some sort of t-shirt. And some some of these artists out there are doing really well with it too. So oh, like shout out to those people who figured it out. Then you have some of the business people thriving uh, because we have artists that have no idea what they're going to do. Like ah, now I need a manager because I was barely making money on my own. Now I need someone to help me make money or figure out what I'm doing. Uh, right. So there are certain people that, that thrived um, in this, in this time. And as I've said on, on previous episodes, like I think a lot of people are also afraid to celebrate their wins or be, you know, outwardly, you know, I had a great 2020 this year because of all the negativity and everything that's going down. But it's like, you shouldn't have to hinder your, your joy or your celebration mm -hmm. because, you know, it might be an unfortunate situation for someone else. So it's just, it's just like a weird, it's just a weird time for a lot of people. Yeah, for, sure. for sure. Um, So for you, I mean, and I think this is important to community as far as you know, health and getting your life in order, how is documenting, documenting and kind of pursuing this goal of health, like really changed your life? Um, you know, it's funny. Um, I didn't even, I just wanted to get in shape really fast. Right. So like, <laughs> cause I got tired of being out of shape. So like, I didn't even think, you know, about it. Um, but what did, uh, somebody say, um, and vitamin shop or something like that. The dude was in vitamin shop. I was like, hey, what kind of protein shake should we have? And he was like, um, uh, long-term consistency um, trumps short-term intensity, right? Yeah. Like, and, and real talk, like, you ain't trying to hear that when you out of shape the first day, right? So, <laughs> so <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just trying to be done with this as quick as I can. <laughs> you, you get up the next day, your legs feel like cinder blocks. And it's like, oh man, I'm done with this right here. And like, what made me laugh is like, I was the guy that had to like take incremental steps to improve, right? So um, I did like 10 minute workouts. You know what I'm saying? I was like done. And then uh, my wife was so funny cause she had been involved in exercise for quite some time. Yeah. So, she was like, we did a 10 minute workout together. I was like, Hey, you want to do a 10 minute workout? She was like, it's over. Like, and like, she was like, why don't you do two 10 minute workouts? I was like, let me enjoy this space. I'm tired after these 10 minutes. Right. So <laughs> eventually we moved up to 15 minutes and then we moved up. I did insanity. Right. And I was doing the Shanti's insanity workout, like once, uh, once a day. And what was killing me is, like I was getting through the workout, but I was still eating like trash. So I made it through like the first month and didn't lose any weight, bro. Like I was so tight, like <laughs> in shape, but I'm not losing any weight. So I took a radical thing. Um, I took a very radical method and I said, you know what? I'm gonna finish out this week. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exercise twice a day. Like I'm gonna do insanity twice a day. Like, and so what happened is that's a 60 day program. So I did it in 30 days and I watched everything that I ate. I counted all my calories. I counted, calculated everything. And I think in the first, in that 30 day run, I lost 29 pounds. Dang. And like, are we in here now? Like, <laughs> we in here now. So what I wanted was fast results. And then the vitamin shop dude was like, no, 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 no. Long-term consistency is going to trump short-term intensity. And so I had to take every step. I started looking at my body. I was like, okay, okay, maybe I could do this and this and this and this. Um, and slowly but surely, um, health became second nature. Exercise became second nature. Yeah. It was no longer about, like, then you... It's almost like uh, my wife said uh, she watched a podcast um, about uh, her faith. And the podcast said, um, when you aren't talking to the Lord, do you feel bad or do you feel thirsty? Right. And so what I thought about in context to even exercise was like, now I feel like I'm missing something if I don't do it. Like it's yeah. no longer 
it's part of your routine drag it on like now it's like so normal and commonplace that it's like yo if i don't do it it's it's a part of uh something's missing like it's like yo what oh that's why got it Mm -hmm. i didn't and so slowly but surely incrementally day by day just trying to stick with the the habit of committing to the process has now become commonplace man i'm in the best shape of my life so um i would say for anybody take baby steps understand what you're doing track everything you eat drink a lot of water and just do it even when you don't feel like it and yeah. eventually you'll get there like i know it sounds really cliche to say but that's how it goes you know you're not gonna want to do it and then you're gonna get there and be like oh i got it it makes sense it's it's crazy how like a f- uh, a switch flips in either direction so I, I tore my ACL a couple of years ago. I play a lot of sports. So it was, it was probably a long time coming. I finally did it. Uh, so I had the surgery and everything. That rehab is like a year long. So yeah. I, was in the, I was in the gym three to five days a week. I was, I was coming out. I was feeling good. I was, like, I was like shredded. I was like, yeah, this is great. And then my knee was back and I went back to playing sports. And I was like, yeah, I don't really need to go to the gym as much anymore. Yeah. And like, yeah. I didn't touch a weight for like two <laughs> years after that so i went from immediately the best shape of my life and followed up with the absolute worst shape of my life and i've never been you know someone who's like really been like out of shape but i saw what i was actually capable of you know at the peak of going through this and i was like dang like i thought i was in like pretty good shape i was like this is different this is totally different i was like but let me take a little break and i never i haven't been back since and that was like three years ago (laughs) <laughs> I'll do some push-ups and some squats every now and then. And it's just like, but if you don't get that, like that, that drive, that motivation as yeah. quickly at the same exact energy that, that you have, like pushing for toward it goes yeah. the other way of not doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's like, it takes, I think a way to stay involved though, for those people that are struggling, make sure that like, you take a picture of yourself, right? Make sure you take a picture. Take a picture of yourself, and every day um, that you do exercise, take a note of like the moment you got tired. Like, take a note of uh, the the move or the exercise that was difficult for you. Like, because those are going to be the things that you that you use to motivate you to move forward. Mm-hmm. Like, don't don't even think about the finished product. Like, cause the finished product is never going to happen. Like that, that's not a thing. Like right. worry about the current product and how you can improve upon the current product. Like where are you struggling? Process those, write them down and then move forward into mm-hmm. the next thing. So a lot of people try to paint the whole Sistine Chapel, you know, they, they try to build the Sistine <laughs> Chapel in like a day. And it's like, they're like lifting their curling bar and it's like, oh, I, I think I got muscles, I'm good. And like, it doesn't work like that. Like, or you do a hundred crunches and you're like, man, my stomach hurts, but I don't see a six pack. I quit. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, nah, like little by little, like little by little. Yeah. Tr- Trisha said you're an overachiever. And someone else said, when you put your mind to it, you get it done. And that oh, just reminds me, that reminds me because you doing the insanity twice in a day really is insanity. Like that's OD. But then I remember I talking to you. I remember yeah. talking to you that time and you had just dropped an album. I think you just dropped hurry up and wait. And you're like, yeah, I got seven more. I just finished recording. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, geez. Yeah. And, and I guess what it is, is like, you don't, you don't realize you are crazy until like people tell you, like, you don't, you don't always realize it. So, so I, I say that like comically, but for real, um, I didn't realize that I was this crazy worker as far as music was concerned <laughs> until yeah. like people were like, yo, are you serious? Like, cause, cause you know, when you look around, you're like, oh, I thought everybody was doing this. Like, and so like, it, I think that's why a guy like Kobe Bryant seems really intense to most people, right? But when I was thinking about, they were, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm write a song a day. And people were like, yo, what? a day and i'm like yeah that's my job right like that's your job you don't do that and i had to understand like 
that's not normal, right? Like, like <laughs> as in exercising twice a day is not normal for people. Like, it's like, yo, why would you do that? You exercise once, that's good. But it becomes so commonplace for me. Like, I, I, I think that has become my normal. So, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, they right. I guess, I guess you could consider that an overachiever. Like, I just, <laughs> yeah, nah, I just, because because here's the thing. I'll tell you what's, what's ironic about that as far as music is concerned. If I'm an overachiever as far as music. Um, I hate recording. Really? Like, I hate it. Like, I absolutely despise the process. Like, I hate recording. I am such a person that hates sitting in the studio and doing nothing. Like, I want to get it over with. Like, wow. I'm ready to go. Yeah, it's like the the I'm more in tune with the mixing process, the attention to detail. And I think why is because it causes me to access a part of my brain that's really OD analytical in the mm -hmm. recording studio. And I don't want to think like that. Cause then I think like it's not, it's not as natural, it's not as organic, it's not as free flowing. You're like, oh, does my voice sound like this? Did I say it at the right tone? It's like, yo, nah, I don't want to be here. Like I just want to get it over <laughs> with. <laughs> like, so I got another yeah. album to write. Yeah, yeah. And if it's not another album, it's just like I could tell when the Lord is about to give me something to write. Yeah. I can tell. Like, cause it's almost like Ruslan, Ruslan said it before, inspiration is a muscle. So, you know, when I stop writing for a while, it's just like trying to get in shape. It's like sometimes the words fire off a little slower. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. eventually you got to get shots up in order to get back the muscle memory to do it again. So now I'm in writing form. So now yeah. stuff is coming really quickly. So you're Michael Jordan in Last Dance. Oh, man, when, pe you know. when people when people told you you don't wait you write a song a day and then in your head you're like and i took that personally <laughs> and then you yeah. just went down <laughs> and you just started writing more songs yeah blame aaron cole man blame aaron cole because i said i was gonna do a song a day he was like i said a song a day for 14 days he was like do it for a month and i was like challenge accepted you know what and, I'm saying? and i took that personally <laughs> yeah i took that personally bro all right, man. So la last question for you Com coming out of this crazy year going into 2021. Um, like, what are your hopes and dreams for the future? What are you what are you hoping is, you know, in this immediate future for you, for the industry, for for the world, I guess? Um, For me personally, um, locking in with um, I, I put it out there on Twitter. I hope we make it happen. Um, locking in there, doing a, a project with Derek Minor. Um, so you're gonna say NF? <laughs> hey man, listen. Hey, hey NF, I let your boy. I had that verse back to you in 15 minutes. You heard? Um, yeah, but, listening. But um, <laughs> honestly, I you know a collaborative project with Derek producing it. Um, uh, me and the wife got a podcast um, coming. Um, hey. I might have podcast too personally i'm i'm really getting into uh stewarding all of the gifts though so everything might not be music related um, mm -hmm. i really want to get into um writing like writing books writing songs for other people um you know just really just really delving into a different components um uh, cultivating different talents um that that the lord has given me so um being able to have and this is this sounds weird but I really want to get to the point where I have a year where the things that are that are other talents of mine become my primary source of income, not music. Like I'm actually trying to set the foundation for something where yeah. I don't music isn't the thing that I have to be, you know, preconditioned to do. Um, and no cut right. I'm not jumping in the back. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Um, I got a couple rounds on Tuck though in the event that somebody come with that bird, you heard me. But um get him cut. <laughs> cut, spark that off. We want to hear those bars. But um, but yeah, man, um getting to the point where you know I could, you know, write books, uh man, um really, really do some things with my wife. Cause I really feel like, and this is just you know, oh sentimental value, um, really getting to um the point where me and my wife 
uh, build what God has uh, mm-hmm. is, is, is giving us to build. Because um, I really feel like the most success I've ever had in anything I've done has been when I partnered with her to do it. So, um, you know, all this, all this, oh man, Jared's a dope rapper and all that stuff, that's cool. But a lot of that was really like me just operating, functioning, so yeah. you know, talent really with like the blessing of my wife right but like anything that we've ever cultivated together um that i've given her um she has multiplied it man you know um you know i gave her a ring uh you know she gave me her life you know what i'm saying i i gave her you know my um you know my time my goals my dedication um she gave me you know uh, a house you know what I'm saying? Like I, I gave her, you know, a commitment. She gave me two beautiful children, man. So everything that's, you know, even even the studio setup that we got, like this was just her idea. Like, well, you know, maybe we could do a podcast, and you know, all of a sudden, like I got my own setup now. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Like, yeah. Even even the subtleties, like I'm like, yo, give her a little bit and multiply, man. And so being able to build something that we've got together so that I could ultimately, and this is just the, the, the inspirational quote I'll leave everybody with, is it really ministry if you can't give it to somebody else? Um, so I'm actually trying to serve in the way to give her the platform that she needs, you know what I'm saying? Um, being able to work to build her um, and, and, and esteem her, man, so that when you know the world looks at her, they're like, yo, that's a husband, you know what I'm saying? That's a that's a wonderful, you know, wife. You love your wife as Christ loved the church, man. Wow, they have a wonderful marriage. Seeing that um, and letting that billow into the generation behind us with our kids. So, yeah, that's awesome, man. Man, your your wife built you a studio. My wife's trying to kick me out of my office. She's like, your son needs a room. <laughs> you got <laughs> you got to go. She goes, your office could be in the living room. I was like, that is not gonna work. It barely works when I'm in here because of the noise running past my door. And she's just, not your door, your son's door. I'm like, ah, I'm yeah, about to lose. Yeah. I'm about to lose my whole, my whole thing. It's all, it's all good, man. And man, if you're a ghostwriting for people, you're really going to have to dumb it down because everyone's going to know. Holy Ghost writing. Holy Ghost writing. Did it right. Holy um, Ghost writing. You right. You know, you right. I, but see, if I wrote for That's somebody. That's hooks. Yeah, if I wrote for somebody else, like, and this is just being honest, I would think to try to be in their shoes. Like, what would I think they would say? No, nah, you like, can't I, do that. You, no, you're, you, you'd be somebody, like, you'd be like, yo, I want to tear this up. And they'd be like, oh, wait, you know. You know like, that's what good songwriters are supposed to do, right? They're supposed to be like, let's talk about experiences. Like, how do we get here? Like, what are you doing? So, yeah, I think... I. Yeah, I'll be a Holy Ghost writer, man. Check it out. This Christian, Christian space. And, and if you secular too, hey, man, the biblical worldview can translate through secular music too, man. So I, 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 I think so. you need to experiment at home and just be like, all right, let me try to write a song for Takashi or, or, or somebody like that. And I think you'll oh. know real quick if you could do no. it or not. If you could yeah. do it with the capacity that you're like, all right, I'll turn this in. <laughs> I'll give, I'll give Takashi a hook. I, I don't think anybody can help me rap, so I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No. All right, man. Well, that's it. Thank you so much, bro. Uh, throw, throw some plugs out there real quick. Where can everyone follow you, listen to your music? Yeah, 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 man. I'm going to sound like a really important person. Just Google me. Good no, I'm just kidding. No, Jared, uh, <laughs> Jared Sanders, J-E-R-E-D-S-A-N-D-E-R-S. That is not Saunders. That is not Jared. It's Jared. Jared. Sanders. Um, and, you know, uh, Jared, not J A R E D, it's J E R E D. Yes, my mom decided to spell it that way. But anyway, um, yeah, y'all can find me there. Um, new music is coming soon. I can't tell you yet. I'll be back to let everybody know. Um, hopefully, I'll get on that pen game. You heard? You can be on pen game. You won't, you won't be back on here to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So- that's, the, that's the wrong one, but we get you on pen game. Because you got, you, I mean, if we're going to get anybody on Pen Game, we got to get you. Hey, man, I'm humbled that you would even say that. But yeah, bro. Like, you already um, knew it. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you what, social media done poked a bear. So, uh, so, so be prepared. 
uh, the the recent events uh, over the last week or so. Social media has poked the bear, so we got some things to talk about. I'm gonna roar on people. Oh, wait, here's an important question before you go. Drew Beck said, are you the only Jared with an E in the world? Um, nah, actually, it's so funny. Like, I went on Instagram and looked up Jared Sanders, and it's like mad Jared Sanders. And I, my mom hit me up. This is when, this is a joke. We're going to part on this. Like, my mom hit me up yesterday when we was kicking it with them. And she said, yo, did you know there's a Jared Sanders on Instagram? I was like, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I'm that guy. She was like, no, no, no. No, no, there's a guy named hashtag Jared Sanders on Instagram. And I said, <laughs> I said, mom, when you put hashtag and then your name, like anything in front of the hashtag pulls up. So anybody ever used the hashtag Jared Sanders, you're going to see an entire trending topic, <laughs> right? Yeah. So she was thinking that I had a stalker when the reality is, she just didn't know how hashtags work. So she thought there was a stalker named hashtag Jared Sanders. And you just posted all your pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I love my mama. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, no, no. I'm not the only Jared with an E, Drew. Um, Yo, if you go on Instagram right now, you see J-E-R-E-D Sanders, man. And I was like, oh, like, this is wild. Um, yeah, but my mama, she thought that, that I had a stalker. I love my mama. I'm going to make sure I share this uh, live stream with her so she knows. <laughs> Be like, look, mom, there's people who couldn't spell my name right either. <laughs> Their parents couldn't spell it either. Nah, but that, that's what made you unique. Facts, facts. All right, bro. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate having you on the show. Like can't, this, can't wait to see what you got coming. And, uh, you know, you got my line. So you, you can send me some stuff. I'll never say no. Oh, for sure. For sure. I got you, bro. All right, bro. Peace. Peace. All right. So that was Jared Sanders. Episode 20 of Community During Chaos. We had Trisha Bell. We had Stephen the Levite. And we had Jared Sanders, who had said was going to be funny. And he was funny. So that's it. Everybody have a good night. And I will see you all next week. Peace.